What have you overcome despite the obstacles? And indeed, maybe why did you set out to do it in the first place? 01743 248321. To answer uh, that question in one way, Val, who's from Shropshire, is currently in Brentford, home of the Nylons. And, oh. in Lance, well, I'm sorry, no one knows anything else about it. I'm sorry, Val. <laughs> tell, tell us three more interesting things about Brentford so we can erase the image of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Alan Freeman in a check jacket from our minds. To be honest, it just has about as much to go for it as Telford. It's really easy to get in and out of. And that's why there's a big office here that I work in. Right, OK. So hooray for, <laughs> hooray, hooray for the practicality of Brentford, which will still be known by generations who associate the word with the word nylons. Now then, we're talking about um, things that you've done and overcoming obstacles, and you're doing this on doing this particular thing on a daily basis. Tell me what you're, t- tell me what you're doing and how you had the idea in the first place. Um, I'm, I'm completing a sponsored cycle ride, um, and I'm doing it while commuting. It's a 12-mile commute each way, and I'm doing a 1,000 miles, um, and I'm doing it to raise money for children in Vietnam to pay for open-heart surgery. And the reason I'm doing it is because I've had four sets of open-heart surgery myself, and um, I just can't imagine families who have to go through all this and then know that they can't actually have the operation that the child so desperately needs. So um, it's... it's yeah, it's it's really it's really difficult actually because it's an hour each way, um, so on top of a, a eight or nine hour work day, it's actually quite a lot of effort, and it's about eighty five times I have to do it. I have to do it eighty five times in total, um, and um, what what kind of terrain is it over? Is it through uh, urban London? You're dodging cabs and lorries and things. Yeah, it's uh, most of the time I'm next to six or seven lanes of traffic. It's not exactly rural. <laughs> um, it's, 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 actually, it's actually quite smelly. It goes past the end of Heathrow, um, so the planes come over my head about two hundred foot over my head. Um, and uh, and but I'm quite lucky because most of it is on cycle paths, so I have to avoid pedestrians and broken glass quite a lot. But uh, but I mostly stay out of the way of vehicles. It could be worse. Tell me, yeah, you've, you've had four lots of open heart surgery yourself. Yes, I guess I have. Tell me about that. Well, I had my first one when I was two, um, and I had a, one at 12, 16, and then again at 27. Um, and I, to be honest, I've been incredibly lucky. If I was born in almost any other country, or not in the mid-70s, and, you know, any earlier, I probably wouldn't be here, which is sort of what inspires me. I think we're, we're amazingly lucky to have the NHS. My parents never had to worry about how much it would cost or, um, or remortgage a house or anything like they would do in most other countries. So... Um, Although it's been very difficult at times, and my family and my, my friends and my partner have been really supportive, it's, I do consider it a blessing, because it's made me the person I am. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, I think all these challenges, are can, you can find some real inspiration in them. Why, um, why, why Vietnam? Uh, I went travelling in about 2000. Um, I had a, had a nice job and everything, and I thought, you know, life's a bit more than this, so I, I quit and put on a rucksack and went off travelling for about a year and a half. And I ended up in Vietnam for a while, and I, I was in a, a village in North Vietnam near China, and just I met there, I couldn't believe that I had a scar on my chest that, you know, showed I'd been to hospital when I'd come out alive. They, they thought people only went in hospital to die, and, and that really made me realise how access to medicine is so important, that people, you know, if they're so desperate to go that they're so ill that, that nothing can treat them. So, so that's what inspired me to pick Vietnam when I was thinking about doing this uh, mad idea. And is, are there systems in places, is there a charity that raises money here that works over there, or did you have to try and uh, find or establish that for yourself? No, no, I found a brilliant charity, the Vina Capital Foundation. Uh, they run a charity called Heartbeat Vietnam, and any money that I raise, they double or triple with local donations in Vietnam from companies um, and charities, so that I only have to raise um, between six and eight hundred dollars um, for each operation for an operation of between two and three thousand dollars to take place. So it's it's fantastic. And you've you've done you're, so you're cycling a thousand miles whilst commuting. So far, you've done just short of eight hundred. How many um, episodes of heart surgery will that pay for? But it's actually already paid for eight. Um, you can look on my website. It's 1,000 in numbers, 1,000 mile 2 in number work, um, dot org. And on there, you can actually see the pictures of the kids that we've already paid for. Oh, so wow, really? Eight, yeah, there's eight children on there. There's a little bit of background on all of them. Do they, you know, what their parents do for a living and brothers and sisters and things. And some of them are holding up little pieces of paper saying, thank you very much to 1,000 miles to work. It's really lovely. It makes me nearly cry every time I see it. 
and I'm, I'm really lucky as well. I've got two other people who started doing it with me. A, a chap in Finland who's also had surgery, and one of my friends down here in Surrey. A chap in Finland's doing it as well? Yeah, from Twitter. He, he heard about me on Twitter, and he said, oh, brilliant, I cycle, and I've had heart surgery, I'll join you. So Thomas in Finland is, is also cycling a thousand miles for me. You, you were tweeting last night about um, about how much hard work last night's ride was. Um, when you're doing that, when it's when it's tough like that, how does thinking about the people that are benefiting help you? It stops me giving up. <laughs> 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 last night, I, I would have gladly got on the train and left the bike at work, but um, it, it just stops me giving up. It's it, because what I'm going through is, is absolutely minor compared to, to what those children and their parents are going through. I'm just looking at the at the lives saved page, and yeah, there's Kim and Trung and Chan and Tandar, who's two, yeah. and his surgery by a visiting American volunteer surgeon. Yeah, absolutely. Where... In fact, in the last three weeks, there were three surgeries done. There was a little eight-year-old girl called Pan who was very, very seriously poorly. Her, not only were her fingernails blue, her fingers were blue. She was fainting a lot. She was really poorly. And a little boy who they had to try four hospitals before they found a surgeon who was willing to operate because it was so risky, but he's also survived. Um, and then another little two-year-old called Dewey, um, who uh, looks like such a sweet little chap. When do you think you're going to finish this? I keep saying very soon, and it keeps taking longer because I keep getting <laughs> a very bad back. Um, <laughs> so I hope to finish it in the next few months. I've only got 200 miles to go. Um, I, I have a rule that I don't do it when the wind's over 17 miles an hour. That, that, sounds, that sounds reasonable. I, you know, no one's going to argue with that, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. Um, and I can't do it because of my own half. I can't do it more than more than twice a week. I have done it three times a week a couple of times, but it makes me quite tired. So um, so generally I do, do two, two journeys a week, so that's 48 miles a week. Um, so it'll, it'll take me probably four weeks in good weather to finish. Uh, so probably eight weeks at the moment. Val, <laughs> 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 Our hat is off to you. Thank you very much for, A, doing it, B, telling us about it. Um, and um, whilst we've been talking to you, Les, the producer, has been very busy and can tell you that um, the Brentford houses a musical museum, including a, a large collection of mechanical musical instruments. So um, if you're in need oh, of some... I know, I know. I better pop out in my lunch break. Hurdy-gurdy relaxation after all this cycling. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Val, thank you so much for that. It's a pleasure. If I could just say, if anybody else wants to join, it's completely open. You can join with a friend and do 500 miles each. Just come contact me off the website, and I'd love to have more people cycling with me. Okay. The website is 1,000 miles to work. 1,002 are in digits. 1,000 miles to work dot org. Get in touch with Val via the website. Val, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Val. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Uh, as Valor, she's from she's from Shropshire. She works lives and works in in Surrey. She's cycling a thousand miles to work, despite as she said having her own heart problems, which means you can't do it more than twice a week or shouldn't do it more than more than uh, twice a week. Her website again: one thousand miles to work dot org. That's one zero 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 word miles digit two and then the word work dot org. Go and have a look, and um, you can see if you go to sponsor us, you can see Val. If you click on lives saved, you can see the kids. That the money that she and her um, companions have raised, um, the operations that they've paid that they've paid for, which is just amazing. Straight.